Yeah. All right, so we want to be able to introduce MathJax because we're using it in the Open Assessments Project. Uh, here's the website, just mathjax.org. It changes plain old um, text on a page into nice looking, well formatted uh, mathematical formulas and expressions. So without MathJax, uh, this is the problem we were running into recently when we were working. Um, MIT had this issue where the MathJax was not formatted correctly. And without MathJax running, this right here is what the text looks like. Um, it's hard to read, and for a student, you'd have to mentally go through and parse that before you could even begin uh, analyzing the problem. And that, that's ugly and, and painful. Yeah, well, that's what uh, I believe. That's, yeah. Yeah. And so, what we're going to do, because we've already figured out all the issues, is we'll just add MathJax in. So I've got MathJax in the OEA project already. You give it some configuration, and um, we also have this config set up so that it will look like it, it'll look for specific characters in the HTML page, and so it knows what text to turn into a mathematical expression. So now. If I go and refresh the page, we have nice looking formulas that are much, much easier to read. Um, I guess all the formulas are written in LaTeX, is that right? Yeah, well I think MathJax actually supports a number of different formats, but these ones are LaTeX. So, you know, there's an XML format called MathML, but long before people, that came along, people have been laying out their scientific papers using LaTeX. So that's you know, if you talk to a scientist, like they care about what their equations look like. And so, so they do, so LaTeX allows you to do really precise looking equations. And so, so um, that's how a lot of papers are written and that's what this is. But then you yeah, know, going to the web, you know, there was, people started out with like, there's no way to do this. So let's just take a picture and embed it. Of course, that kind of doesn't work so good because um, when it, it scales, it looks grainy, so you've got resolution issues. And so they started taking hybrid approaches, and then different browsers started adding different support for different things. So some browsers support MathML, but, and maybe they all do now, I don't know. Um, but with MathML, you typically have a, a root node, I believe, and then inside of it, you know, it interprets it using that way. So there's a, there's a company called Design Science that's kind of been at the forefront of that, of the implementation of plugins for MathML. Um, but then I think MathJax, I'm not sure if they got involved with um, MathJax. Maybe search design science and, and MathJax and see. Okay. I was just looking right here because here's a MathML. Oh, yeah, so there's MathML. So with MathML, you have two different, there's two, you know, there's two, two different things that you care about probably when you're representing math. One is how to make it look pretty, and the other one is how to make it semantically interpretable, right? So that if you wanted to feed this into an equation, something that can process equations, how do you represent it that way? And they're not, and so there's actually, they'll take the approach sometimes of representing, having two representations, one that you can actually interpret, and one that looks good, because they're not, it's not always, uh, I don't know that you can unify that, right? Because there's some layouts that, yeah, so I don't, I don't know. But see that you can see that right there. So the semantic tags take into account concepts of times, parallel, so so here's here's making it look good. Here's this semantic markup. Now I don't know what if LaTeX even makes an attempt to make to to, to do semantic markup. But I don't know. That's a good question. Anyway, so. Yeah, but MathJax is pretty slick because it's open source and just like you saw there, you don't actually have to use any tags. It's just you have to say these are the delimiters. Uh, when you run into a backslash bracket, what follows is, is LaTeX. So clean it up. And as far as how they actually implement it, I don't know if they've got their own custom fonts or what it is that they're doing like, you know, to get all those math symbols. But I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. I haven't looked into that. 
Yeah. But that's them. that's what the equation looks like. So if you're using LaTeX, you have that versus you know this XML markup from MathML. Yeah. And they're most like they're authoring tools for authoring the LaTeX that show you show it to you as you type. So it's a lot easier to author them as you're going along. Right. So anyway. MathML. Actually, this code that we're using, if you want to go back to that init, I'm trying to remember who I worked on with this. Is it you, Ron, or Cole, or somebody? I mean, it was quite a bit. That's you? Yeah. Yeah, we, we, this is a little bit of, you'll notice here at the top that someone actually wrote a bookmarklet for doing this. And so this is just a specific use of the MathJax library that allows you to apply it. I've still got a bookmark on my browser. Oh yeah? <laughs> <laughs> Allows you to apply it after the fact. I can't remember exactly why we didn't use some other instantiation of it, but you know, look right here, all we're doing is we're we're dynamically writing a script tag into the page that has the configuration, has the files. So that just happens after the thing loads. And I guess you've wrapped that in a Maybe you wrapped it or not. I don't know. You wrapped it in a class. Um, it's well, it's in this object, this math yeah. Jackson. Oh, so, yeah, I think we did that. But anyway, so it's a little bit non-standard use of it, but pretty much. Right, and then we put it in because this is an Ember project. We have this item base. So after the Ember, after Ember finishes rendering the content of a given assessment item into the page, it calls this execute math jacks. And that might be why we went with this non-standard um, setup. Right. Because the content isn't on the page at the time that math jacks is inserted into the page. So we have to, after the fact, tell math jacks to do this execute math jacks right here and change the LaTeX or it looks like elements that have these class names. Yeah, there's a bunch of different things it's looking for. So, that, so people might mark up their stuff a bunch of different ways and just try to handle all of them. But one interesting thing we found out in debugging this that, that James probably already knows, but we didn't until we started debugging this, is that the Ember did remember, if you extend a component, or what is it? So you call them an Ember? Well, yeah, any any component or view, anything that implements did insert element, um, it does not propagate up the tree. So if I have a did insert element, for example, in my edX multiple choice, there's a did insert element, and we were not calling super. So the MathJax code was never called. Um, so you always have to remember to call this dot underscore super so that that propagates up to the parent, you know, assuming you want the, the functionality from the parent. It's good to know. Yeah, that one, that was a kind of a nasty little bug that made its way into production. And then when people were using MathJax, in particular, like the, the multiple choice for QTI, I don't believe, see, it, it doesn't do the um, did insert. So the error didn't show up for QTI files. It only shows up for the MIT edX files because we only overwrote it in the edX case. Uh, so that was kind of a nasty bug that MIT ran into because we're all of a sudden using the edX XML instead of QTI. All right, any questions with MathJax? I imagine most of the questions will come when people start implementing it because that's usually when the really tough problems show up. Mm -hmm.